following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and welcome to another episode on Gen X Rising and as you all know this is a program where we talk about topics or issues relating to the youth and today we are at Cafe Lagos with a cute ambiance as well. Now today on the program we have three very beautiful women who are here to share their experience, their uh, business ideas, the ideas about this industry. So basically we are going to talk about the fashion industry, the model industry, the acting industry and also about the pageants here in Sri Lanka and this program is mainly focused for the youth out there who are thinking of even joining this industry. So with that introduction I would like you to be introduced to Indi Yapa Abe Vardhana who is a renowned fashion designer and also Natasha Fernando who is uh, Miss Sri Lanka for Miss Earth 2018 and also Gamya Vijaydasa who is Miss Sri Lanka 2009. She's also an actor and an entrepreneur as well. Thank you all of you beautiful women for taking part in this program and having this conversation with me. So tell me, how has it been uh, so far in the industry? What have you all been up to? Tell me. Um, <laughs> um, in industry as in like fashion industry. In the fashion industry. Yeah, so I've been running my own business. Um, yeah, we've just had our show. Um, getting on with like, you know, after a period of struggle, uh, trying to make ends meet and keep it going. Yeah, heard that recently uh, the show Aria yes. was really beautiful. Oh, and tell us more you. about it, Indi. How uh, did it go? It went, I think it was a successful show. Uh, there were like raving reviews for it and people were like, you know, really excited about it. And more than anything, like I got to celebrate it with my staff. We are like 99% uh, women based. Uh, so that was like after a long time, uh, we got to do it on our own. And even for a Sri Lankan designer, I think it was like after a very long time they had their own show. Uh, so it was quite big for us, uh, it was like a milestone achieved. Um, and um, um, we had it at a great location, a lot of people came in, we celebrated our work. I wanted to do it for the 10th year uh, for our brand, uh, but due to COVID and everything that was happening around, we had to push it. Um, so now, um, yeah, finally we did the show. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen the reviews and the comments also and people were so amazed with it and they were saying it was so flamboyant yes. as well. Yeah, I, I was think, amazed. Yeah, <laughs> I, realized, I, I witnessed it and I was amazed. It was an amazing show with like amazing talent, like Sri Lankan talents and even like a couple of models coming yes. down from yes. India. So it was an amazing like show to witness and also to celebrate, like she said, the work and the efforts of like our we own had, Sri We had a lot talent. of uh, local yeah. artisans joining. Uh, so it was more of a Sri Lankan thing. So I'm very proud about. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what do you think of uh, in this new collection? Oh, it was lovely. I, I think like I wanted it all. <laughs> it was an amazing, yes, uh, it was like amazing. Like, you know, I think there was pieces like catering it to everyone. Yes. Like, you know, it doesn't matter like, you know, whether it's Western, Eastern, like, and the Sri Lankan, and especially the fact that, you know, there's Sri Lankan touch added to it was the most amazing part. Where like, you know, you can wear it and be proud about it. You know, that gives that confidence, like it doesn't matter like it's in Sri Lanka or wherever you are in the world. If you're wearing that piece, you have that pride that you're carrying with yourself. 
Yes, yes. so that's something I still get goosebumps. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, that is translated like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Nasha, should tell me, what have you been up to these days? Well, I uh, work as a, a digital media planner, apart from like the whole um, fashion and modeling. So, fashion and like mostly like modeling is something that I do out of passion. So um, that's something that I have to mention because there are so many like talents out there who do it as a profession. So it's more of like a hobby or a passion to me. So other than that, I'm working full time. Um, so yeah, like whenever like I come across an amazing and like a conceptual shoot or like you know something like that, I I always like you know don't think twice on like taking part of because that's something that. It's a value addition for me and I know that like whoever that I'm working with, I can give my best. So um, uh, so that's how like I sort of maintain my work in this industry. So that's why I think like I don't come out as often as like the phases that won't come out as often as like you see. So yeah, that's what I do. Okay, yeah. I think Gamya, you can relate to what Natasha said also. I think prior yeah. to the program, you were mentioning that you were <coughs> staying low key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, absolutely. Um, yeah, for me, I guess my uh, full time job is my business. I run that uh, with full commitment. Um, so I own a clothing brand called Vaiduria. That's what I do. And um, I am a professional actor, but um, you know, it's not a full-time gig as of now because we don't have that kind of industry that sustains full-time acting as a profession, unfortunately. So um, that also means, you know, having another profession or having a full-time job means you do have the luxury of being able to pick and choose the kind of projects you do um, when you are an actor. Um, that's something I really enjoy doing. But at the same time, with the growth of the social media space, um, the thing that I love the most, which is content creation, um, that's something I do full time now as well, which is great. Um, so while the industry, which we'll talk about later in detail, <laughs> while the industry has you know, uh, declined in certain areas or depreciated in certain areas, this area is one of the areas that has um, actually had a bit of a rise, which is the social media space mm -hmm. and the influencer space. Um, I'm not an influencer. I would consider myself somebody who enjoys content creation, and I, you know, sort of have been able to make that a professional thing at this point. So those are the things I do. What do you enjoy in uh, content creating? Or what's the purpose of you doing that? For me, it's very much about self-expression, and I've been doing it for a long time. Before social media existed as well, I was doing blogs and things like, like that because I'm a writer, I do write. Um, I've been doing it since I was a kid. So um, that kind of progressed into my other love, which is fashion. And then um, I started doing you know, really risky things in Sri Lanka, like doing fashion videos when nobody was doing it. And um, it was terrifying <laughs> because you don't know how that will be received. But you know, it, now it's widely um, done, and that's great to see because that's where we were trying to get to. But uh, those are things I genuinely enjoyed because when you do something you genuinely enjoy, you're happy to take the good and the bad with it um, because you do it for yourself. Yeah. So that's what I enjoy the most. I love having that outlet to express myself. I think we're all creative people here, so we can sort of all relate to that. So yeah, that that's what I love the most. Yeah, I think all three of y'all can relate to it, like doing what you love, and yeah. that's what yes. brings out the creativity. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, like industry. especially the content creation is something that it's a main hub, like right now, to like express our creativity. Like because social media is a wide place. So I mean, I mean, still terrifying, I would say, because, you know, we don't know how people would yes. take it. Like, you know, it can be positive, it can be negative, but still, like, what the luxury of it and the beauty of it is, it's not like traditional media, like, where it's a one-way communication. Like, since, like, I, my profession itself, like, you know, carries with the digital media, like, you know, it's always a two-way communication. You know, like, what you're catering, and then at the same time, like, real time, you can get that... Um, input from like your audience, right? So sometimes it can be terrifying because we don't know how they would take it and then how they would like the feedback that will be given to us. But still, I think creativity wise, that's something like since I also do content creation, it's something that you can celebrate every day and like, you know, 
you can embrace that freedom within mm -hmm. i think like when it comes to designing i think ex yes yeah. expressions wise social media and like i know like especially for a design expression matters a yeah. lot so definitely yeah expression pay plays a major role in this industry you know yeah. coming out and talking about yourself and it's a portrayal of who you are basically yeah, so yeah and also like yeah. it encourages like you know people who uh want to do it and not doing it mm -hmm. like once once somebody is actually being their self mm -hmm. uh then it kind of like gives you that motivation you know uh, yeah. to be, yeah. be your own self mm -hmm. in the end gamya i think y'all can relate to this now y'all have been in this industry and been entrepreneurs also for quite some time now when y'all started the business uh, what were the challenges y'all faced now comparing to the current context is it similar as of yet are the challenges still the same or what were the barriers that you had to face then and what are the barriers now mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's <I> all <laughs> entry into the space i feel like was a little bit easier in terms of how much you had to um invest in terms of capital at that time that's yeah. for sure because i started with around 25000 rupees that i borrowed from my mother and never paid back <laughs> <laughs> same same <laughs> mine is the same so you know you you can make something out of very little at that time just with creativity and uh, an innovative way of looking at something uh, because when i started nobody was buying sarees online or nobody was running to buy sarees online because it was very scary um, as a concept without trying things on yeah. it still is to a lot of people <laughs> but um, it took time to sort of develop into that um but at the same time it was easy to sort of um get a collection made or to you know put something out there and it would have been the same for any other product as well i feel you can just invest a little put your creativity into put your hard work into it and get put um i don't think it's that simple anymore because you have quite a lot of um you know investment that's required for something like that to do at a reasonable quality um to represent a reasonable standard of um product if you're you know in that retail space or in the in the business space i feel yeah is it the same so, for you in the kind of like when when i started i think like she said um i started with one seamstress and a pattern maker and my dad just bought me like a couple of machines and uh, we were just almost like a full fledged uh, business at that point just after my studies and all of that uh, but now i see the struggle for uh upcoming brands and all of that the main thing is like their retail space uh if they're not going online uh but i guess on the other way instagram and all of that has helped a lot uh there are a lot of and the advantage now is that there's space for everybody if you find like your sort of niche uh and if there is a uh um, authenticity to what you do uh like a signature carries through then i guess this is this more space yeah. uh, and also the recognition is more now yes at that point like uh, fashion designers are okay so maybe you couldn't be a doctor or a mm. um, you know an engineer yeah. that's why you chose this yeah. that sort of uh, stigma was around with our culture yeah. to yeah. like how we grow up our educational backgrounds and all of that uh, but um, having said that i think uh, with correct exposure i'm she's also like seen the world and uh moved back so she knew that taking that risk right gamya like uh, this audience spirit yes. like so for me also i knew like i'm going to like survive yes. through this um there are, there are ways to like manipulate it and get on with uh, but i think the people like students who are coming up here now what i see is if they don't have that like little space given by somebody it's it's a major struggle and then they fall down yeah yeah it's that one point that could yeah so could, uh, yeah. completely blow you off yeah. 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 yeah now all these industries that you are in the acting industry the modeling industry the fashion industry and then also the social pageants media, social yeah. media it's all highly uh, criticized you know so how how did you all you know deal with them and especially for you natasha i think you were one of the youngest competitors uh, like yes. in back in 2018 <laughs> and uh, you were straight away as you mentioned like prior to the program also you were straight away <laughs> thrown into the deep end and yes. that was your first work that you ever done mm -hmm. and that's amazing to see that you won and you won the title for sri lanka on your first try and uh, how was your experience then 
Well, um, like I said, like while well, I was just having a chat with her, I was telling. So it was my very first time that I'm stepping into the industry. Mm. I had no prior experience. It was just out of passion. Like even going in front of a camera, the only camera that I was in front of was like my mom's. <laughs> because like she used to like dress me up and take pictures. That was the only experience that I had. Yeah. So I was just like stepped in and then like I have to say like the preparation that I had like with the help of the team that I was working with back then like that team was amazing so like they didn't like treated me as someone like who's just doesn't know anything rather someone who is passionate about what I am doing and that gave me that push and that confidence so I think like that sort of given me that gave, gave me that confidence and then like and like also that passion for me to know about the industry and like you know what I should be doing what I shouldn't be doing and at the same time I always made sure that I am true to what I'm passionate about because like you know like once you step into the industry especially like when you step with a passion like there are so many um doors that you know will be open to you it can be acting it can be like modeling like in terms of my passion like it was for miss earth so like you know that comes with like you know um more of like the environmental cause which i had like a little bit of knowledge back then you know like it's just something that i hear from the news or from a magazine or something that i like you know read online other than that i never had that exposure of like that and the gravity of what's happening around the world what's happening inside the country so like i think like i said like you know it's just the first step but i, I think it was a giant step and i think yeah. it was out of luck that i won so yeah like that's how like i'm here today right now wow that's amazing that's yeah. that's a very scary story <laughs> like you do pushed out there like in one go and yes Well, anyway, proud to say that you won the title for oh, Sri Lanka so as well. Thank you so much. Getting so many questions to ask you all also about the industry and especially questions that have been asked from young people to join this industry. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. You're watching Gen X Y Z, and we'll be back soon. Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we were in discussion within the Yapa, uh, Gamya Vijayasa, and also Natasha Fernando. Now, in the first segment, the conversation was uh, becoming interesting. <laughs> Now, uh, I want to morph into the modeling industry and or any industry, the acting industry or the fashion designing industry. Now, if there are young people who want to enter this industry, what are the basic things that a person needs to have before entering the industry and what should they look out for mm interesting i mean it depends on the industry i think maybe indi can speak more about the fashion, fashion. industry um but as far as acting goes i think it's time that we consider it an industry and <laughs> that we consider it a profession because people do tend to you know consider it something you can walk into um just by you know having a natural talent or having a particular look or whatever it is which is all fine but it is an art at the end of the day just like you know your fine arts or your music or um sketching or sculpting or any of it it's an art so there is um a science behind it there is um there there are things you have to learn in order to be effective at your job and that's something i think um in sri lanka we need to recognize and respect because when you don't have both of those things recognition and respect in an industry or in a profession it reduces the credibility of that um profession and professionals who are um practicing in that so i think that's something that i would say is going to benefit the industry if people came in with the understanding that there is a little bit of learning that we have to do uh a little bit of training we might want to take um to do to be better at our job um that's for acting and modeling but even in pageants having preparation just like natasha i am also somebody who kind of 
you know, walked into the pageant as my first experience of uh, modeling or, you know, any sort of showbiz um, in that sense. So if I didn't come with training, if I didn't come with um, preparation, if I didn't come with homework, I don't believe I would have won. It's very simple. So I went to the people that are best of the best, or considered the best of the best here, or considered good at what they do here, to learn what I need to learn, to be able to deliver what I needed to deliver. So it's not by accident that you become what you become, at least in my case. Um, so what, we'll get to like a lot of the, the stuff that we uh, I experienced at that time, coming into it as a complete outsider. Um, but in any industry, especially in this, longevity, stability, and being able to last years, decades, a lifetime in that profession if you want to, depends on the kind of back-end work you do. I, I personally believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well, how can you describe like the support you all received from Sri Lanka, our government, maybe the corporates, or anything of that sort? Do you think that you all need to work your way through alone? Or do you think we as a nation is supporting our individuals to strive as well? Um, in my case, uh, I mean, from my little experience, I'm talking about the fashion industry and all of that. Um, the recognition is very low. I mean, that is because of the exposure, I think, as a country. Uh, th things are changing now, uh, but to um, come up with your own label and having to justify what you're doing. Basically, what we are doing is we are selling an emotion to another yeah. person, right? Correct, a uh, feeling. And yeah, it's a feeling. And then um, putting a price tag to it, it has been like the biggest hurdle. Mm. Um, and to convince another, like say, a bigger um, authority or an organization or somebody in power to sort of understand this concept and sort of fuel it, uh, is very difficult um, and also for the people who are getting into the industry thinking that this is a lucrative business mm -hmm. or you can just have a career out of it I think if you do not come with the proper practice and authenticity is, um, is the biggest challenge uh, in survival mm -hmm. um, right I think that's because you know I have seen a lot of this there's so many coming and which is nice that that is because whoever has been there has inspired uh, the new talent because that we, we are extremely talented our country uh, there's a lot of talent everywhere um, but the thing is like when you're pursuing it as a career you always look at somebody who has who's done it mm -hmm. and sort of copy the way through uh, sometimes it works for some people but uh, eventually when you don't know uh, your own way of doing it, uh, you don't know what to do next day. What if the other person has like not, uh, you know, uh, put it out what they're doing. So things like that. So that is not going to sort of keep you surviving. Um, that is the main thing that I always like uh, advise because we have interns now coming uh, we're training uh, new people to come and I, I tell them like do it because this is what you want to do and you're passionate about um, and also like get correct help uh, have a role model or like somebody um, you know uh, who could actually understand your concept and uh, respect like Gamya said um, and encourage you to like achieve it um, so those are the those are the hurdles and the challenges I see uh, even when it comes to um, like say for a government or anybody to support I think a lot of conviction has to happen uh, for the industry which we lack we don't have those uh, bodies to represent us at an international level uh, the, the little view we have um, those things are mainly uh, taken over by a very little uh, um, sort of an elite crowd. Um, so then it's difficult for people who are from the outer circle to get in um, and also to uh, have that uh, foot set in out of Sri Lanka where actually the business will generate. Um, so that's 
Yeah. yeah. Even I feel like in Sri Lanka, there's so much of talent available. There are beautiful people. There are strong oh, women course, out yes. there. Not only women, like so young people yeah, who want yes, to men, make a change definitely. in this world. Yes, yes. It's just that they're not exposed to the right path or do we even have paths in the first mm -hmm. place? You know, where do yeah. we go? Yeah. It's thing. like, you know, um, like first step to it is like both um, in the Anka said, like you have to know what you're passionate about. Because once you have identified it, then it's a matter of, you know, you getting the right help, you know where to go, you know what to do. Because I think sometimes like, you know, with the education system or rather the mindset of like most of like, it can be like from the family back background. So like, you know, like there's no enough support for our youngsters to sort of understand that passion either. Yeah. So like once, because even for like, you know, for an example, fashion designing, you know, like, like it, that, that push has to be there. You know, yeah. once you're passionate about it, then you will do your research. And like, you know, again, if I come to social media, like, you know, now you have like anything, you can access to anything with a little bit of your fingertip, right? So like one, so you have that, um, access like you have that like you can access to it it's just like you have to find that passion like and then it's a matter of surviving and then it's a matter of like striving through to like you know not just the end goal but something far more wider than it is mm. so as in sri lanka how can you all describe the current situation of the modeling industry right now and the recognition that we have for fashion designing or modeling or being a creative person I think the recognition is more now because a little bit of uh, respect has come along with success of the people in the yeah are. exactly yeah. people who are already um, existing in this space. So that's a good thing, especially uh, in the fashion space, the retail space. Even just being an entrepreneur, that has gained a lot of value. Uh, because when I came into this as well with my academic background, everybody kind of couldn't understand why I just didn't go and get a high paying <laughs> corporate job and that, you know, why would you do that? And I, I studied business management. I studied marketing. That's where my expertise is. And it was only natural for me to do that for myself. So the rest of the world, they were in those times, they understood it, but it took convincing for me, even within my own family to kind of say, uh, it only makes sense. It makes the most sense that I, you know, have this academic background that I, you know, serve myself with it. So that I think is changing now. Now they're, you know, much more open to it. They're much more excited about it, proud of it even. So I think um, I love seeing that change for everybody, you know, the young, youngsters as well who are coming out of the framework of having three options in life, be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, <laughs> you know. Um, there are so much you can, there's so much you can do with your life and there's a lot of talent here. So that's that. But as far as the modeling industry is concerned, which I'm not a part of, but I am um, on the you know outer circles of it, doing what I do, I I think that has taken a little bit of a dive, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I think. I guess like uh, the, the correct uh, training, we lack training. Mm, agree, agree. Uh, and also the the people who get into it, I don't know. I maybe they take it. I mean, I'm not trying to sound. Uh, um, bitter about it uh, I think uh, what I see is it's nice that everyone wants to like you know unless you're actually doing it out of uh, passion uh, but what I see is maybe they think it's easier to uh, get because you know you have a social media account um, mm -hmm. like you know okay so then this is the way to go mm -hmm. kind of a thing I think that that exposure has a little negative impact on the industry as well uh, because I think even for a model the personality matters a lot if you're representing a brand mm -hmm. uh, you know like that sort of uh, professionalism has to come yeah. um, I think the there are a lot coming but we don't have the correct requirement sometimes that's something I struggle with even though there's a lot yeah, doing it absolutely. Uh, picking somebody to sort of uh, endorse my brand mm -hmm. Um, so I think for those things you need a lot of professional backing. Um, and yeah. we also don't have the industry to sustain it. Correct. So you can have 
hundred thousand models coming in. Yes. But you also have an industry. You need to have an industry like and an infrastructure. Like a cycle. Yeah, exactly. The infrastructure is yeah. simply not there. not there. The investment is simply not there. You know, how can we have runway models without having fashion shows? Correct. How can we have brand endorsements without brands actually paying models and personalities to endorse Correct. them? And the so agencies to like exactly. sort of like and to represent them. them. Yes. And we yeah. have to have a functioning mechanism for people to enter into. Then, as you said, the um, the requirements can come into play. Then the agencies and the and the management and you know people hiring them, the clients can say this is what we require. Right now, it's just anything. And and, and also the biggest the thing is exactly. Pay. I was going to say now yeah. it's based on who charges the lease. Mm -hmm. Sometimes exactly you know? that like, is sad. Yeah, it's I sad. think like um, like I have like a huge like mad respect for all the models out there because like I mean like I said like it's more it's of, a like, very a, hard job. It's it a is very a very hard, hard job. Not, uh, I mean yeah, uh, you something that I can. Like I am, I'm, I have so much respect. Yes, yeah. agreed. Um, you can't just walk in, yeah. face in front of the camera, and just go. There's like so much of preparation, and like you know, yeah. it's not just. You sometimes okay. can't even eat. Yes, <laughs> and most of the time. Most yeah. of the time, and then like you know, if there's a job for like you know in like, next like in another three days, like you know the preparation comes like far more before, like even for a runaway, like yeah. I like you know. The effort, rehearsals, the time, rehearsals, a lot like, of commitment. You know, lot of commitment. It's, it's a lot of commitment, and I feel, I personally feel like that, um, like there are professional models out there, and like there are, I mean, it's okay, like even if you're like a passionate upcoming person, like, but like you said, like just because you have like a like a good like a follow base or else like a good social media page. I mean, also it's you need a nudge. I yes, think. exactly. Yeah. And you can't call yourself these things. That's the okay. biggest thing. You yes. can't go around calling yourself a, a model or an actor. Yeah. Or there has to be something you have to fulfill, mm. some prerequisite it for you to. It is difficult to take the first step mm. or finding like the spot to do it or someone to give you that like first project. Mm. Uh, it's difficult. But I guess like once you get into it, you can actually call yourself. Once the, you've established yes. a certain yes. amount of yeah. work, yes. yeah. then you can call yourself yeah. a professional. You have whatever. to make your yeah. mark Correct. Yeah. in whatever the profession that you are in. Even camping. for yeah. us like now, we, as a fashion designer, mm. uh, it was not overnight. I could have called like, yes. you know, entrepreneur or mm. whatever. Correct. So it's just a lot of effort and um, hard work and years behind it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think like whatever the profession that um, you are in, or or maybe you're planning to go into, you should have that sort of understanding and the respect yeah, to you need like. Time, yeah? Yes, you need time. You can't just like you know step in and like do it overnight and like the patience sometimes like you can be like so passionate about it but like in like a like few weeks or a few months like if you don't get a job like you know like it can be in any industry like you can't just fall back attitude, you have to, yes. attitude also matters i think like yes. you can't give up mm. and you just have to i mean also like after a point you need to know when to like maybe divert Correct. Yeah. Yes, you you will know it, but so it's at just, a point you yes. have to divert. Yes. Yes. yes, okay, I get it. Uh, so we need more advice for the young people who want to join these industries as well. But before that, we have to go into short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen X Y Z. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we've reached the last segment of this episode. Now, uh, since we have a little time left, I really want to get into the facts of, you know, when children or the young people who wants to get into these industries. Do you think it's credible for one person to be in this industry permanently? Or as you said, like before we went in the break, it's important that you divert to another segment and you know when that time comes. Why do you say that? Um, I think like what I meant from it is like you know um, sometimes you get stagnated and um, it's important to keep yourself motivated 
it is important to like you know achieve in life we are here for a very short time uh, this life is given to you for some purpose so i believe in that so i think uh, when one you do what you do um, sometimes you succeed sometimes and failure is inevitable i think it's it's really needed for um, yes rejection any, any, and failure um, and the mistakes are also like really important and that's how you learn like not to do it um so that in diversion i meant is like even in the fashion industry you don't necessarily have to be hooked on to being a designer there's other avenues you can uh, divert your talent in right uh, sri lanka has a lot of uh, artisans um ex- like super craft um we have biralu we have a lot of like authentic uh, batik uh, and things like that you know so and all of these businesses do have other layers uh, where you can look into like you know make a proper business out um, and and recent times there's a lot of uh, weight on women empowerment like there's a lot of women entrepreneurs which is amazing i think it's something that i really believe in women are the future <laughs> not trying to be uh, de- i mean it's a lot of lot of talent and um, so when you are um, in one industry you shouldn't like tag yourself just being you know okay i'm just i'm a designer you know there's so many other things that can get attached to it and not to get discouraged just because this part didn't work um uh, and you know like you give it like enough time and then you move on to the next step in um with, with a positive mindset of like building better yeah Now, i think it's that excitement that you should give it give in to your life you know like like same with me like i have a full time job like in the media industry and then like i do content creation i love to travel whenever possible and like if like a good job comes in my way i would give my best for the modeling as well so it's that excitement and also like i think i personally believe that as an individual like you know you're not just born to do one thing there are so many things that you can do as an individual where it sh- it gives a value to yourself and also a value addition to the others around you there's so much that you can do yes so i think yeah, that's why like you know you should not stick to one path you know once i think like it's just a journey along the way you will find your path sometimes you might go halfway and then you will realize that's not like where i should be heading into so that's why like i think rather like you know rather than sticking into one path just you know celebrate yourself in whatever the professions that you want to be in but at the same time where, wherever you want to be heading into make sure that you do it out of passion and also with lots of um i would say homework you know like research about it and then know like you know what you want to do and what you should not do and then set your set some boundaries i think that way you can succeed and survive as an individual yeah so coming back to the titles that you all have won for sri lanka now miss sri lanka miss earth now it's a huge title and you all have done this for sri lanka as well what did it mean to you all representing sri lanka because some people think oh winning this title you need to be beautiful the term beautiful comes into play there but what more have you all put into in earning this title for our country and what did it mean to you all gamya i think um the second winning this title miss sri lanka becomes the biggest achievement of your life for me that's not i mean that's not what i would consider success for myself it's what you do beyond that so for me now looking back it's been so many years it's been over a decade winning miss sri lanka is one of my tiniest achievements So I think um that is what I wanted to get to as well. It's fine, we're really proud of that achievement, but in the bigger scale of things honestly, it's it's just something. It's great. It's a great thing. It's a life defining moment, but it's 
honestly at this point not defining who I am. It's just a little piece of information about me. And then like Indy said, you carry on and it's about gaining credibility for yourself as a human being, as a personality. And I believe that's been my journey and trying trying to achieve mm -hmm. that. So when you come into this industry with this aimed at being the biggest achievement of your life, then you kind of have nowhere to go mm -hmm. from there. And that's where you see a lot of people kind of either disappearing into thin air after winning such a title or um, not getting anywhere after that. You have to have bigger goals for yourself and this has to be a part of that, a stepping stone, which is fine. People use this kind of platform as a stepping stone all the time yeah. to get into acting, to get into modeling, to get which into is, so many is, different things. It's totally natural, okay. it's yeah. natural. You need a platform some, sometimes for exposure. But what what bigger goal do you have for yourself, if, if at all? If you don't, that's also fine. This is not something that you have to have. But if you do, then this is just something you utilize to kind of get yourself you know, um, to your destination. But at the same time, it is a journey, so you have to enjoy all the other things. And rejection is 100% redirection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is redirection. When I was, um, you know, trying to get into the Bollywood industry for six, seven years, and for 99% of that time, I was, you know, sitting at home doing nothing because that's what the acting industry is a lot of waiting, and you just do like work whenever you get it until you're successful then of course you're working most of the time so the reality is that i was just sitting there doing nothing <laughs> and i had all these you know um skills that i was going to utilize sometime later in life and i'd already done a master's in business i'd had this passion for fashion since i was in kindergarten and i was like okay later on when this doesn't work out or when this, this does work out or when I retire, I'll do that. But there came a point in life where I had like a near-death experience on a flight, long story. But at that <laughs> point, I realized later is, you know, I mean, it's unpredictable. There is no later. It's now. We yeah. have now. Yes. So Present I started moment. doing this basically as a form of entertaining myself while I was you know sort of just waiting for my real dream to come through <laughs> and this became you know one of the biggest achievements of my life having having this brand having this as my livelihood being and in, being independent being um, self-sufficient all of that came through this and this gave wings to my dream so just see how that came about so if I had thought that failure or rejection was the end of my life it would have been the end of my life yeah. so rejection is 100% redirection yeah. you should not fall back no absolutely yes. not yes you sh definitely should not because there are I so many I think rejection is quite important it is it's it is important. it makes you strong and confident it kind of like like i said like it she says redirection mm. rejection always like uh, want to make you think of new avenues right correct mm -hmm. yeah so you're always like uh, on the lookout which is really important for being an entrepreneur being like successful at what you do that thirst has mm -hmm. to be there like you know yeah. sort of never agility comes up. from yeah. failure even as a business when when challenges come yeah. when business gets hit which it does yeah, inevitably you I can mean, never yeah, sustain for an example great COVID example and all of COVID, yeah, exactly like, I mean, we pulled it through uh, and for three years, it was just, I mean, you could see the next three years, it's, it's just going to be so hard. Uh, but somehow, you know, like that sort of spirit uh, kept it together for us. And yeah, well, unfortunately, we've reached the end of our program <laughs> as well. But before we end, is there a message that you all can convey to the viewers who are watching this and the young people who want to take part in pageants or take part and be a fashion designer or enter these industries of expressing yourself? Would you advise them to pursue a permanent career in this field? And if so, like what are the things that they should keep in mind? Some advice from the pros. Definitely, I think do I enter think the industry, that's for sure. 100% you should, yeah. yeah. If that's what your, you know, calling is, that you feel is your calling, 100%. Um, but I wouldn't say something like be yourself because that sounds silly. <laughs> and, um, but I would say find out who you are because it's not something that you know at a young age to be yourself. Like who the hell are you because it takes time. So 
be committed to finding out who you are in the process of doing something that you love and that can change be open to that as well you can love something else tomorrow that's also um, a possibility be open to that um, but do it for the right reasons don't do it for any external reasons other than this is what makes me the happiest and brings me the most joy yeah because so like you know like there can be like social pressure coming in like I said with social media like you know my peer pressure so don't sort of restrict yourself into those like Kamya said like find your passion and do lot, lots and lots of homework because that way you know like you know if one like today like if your like path doesn't mean to go in that way you know like where to head into yeah especially you, about the industry yes, itself exactly and these hard times in Sri Lanka also yes, that's true so like so you will survive but do what you're passionate about because like I said life is all about a celebration and an excitement so yeah why not do what you love yeah in my opinion I think uh, um, I always tell people there's space for everybody um, you just have to hang in there and uh, take baby steps uh, don't uh, you know take it as it comes but having that sort of uh, vision and focus but uh, very small steps uh, um, that that's going to take you a long way. Don't rush. <laughs> I like that. Don't yeah. rush. Yeah. <laughs> Don't rush. <laughs> well, this is the end of our program as well. Again, thank you so much for sharing your content you with us. me as well, with the viewers also. I believe that the young people who want to join this industry will get something positive out of this and do their homework, mm -hmm. as you said, especially during these tough times in Sri Lanka as well, because the industry here in Sri Lanka is completely different to overseas, and you yes. know you need to make Very a decision whether you're going to pursue this career here or go abroad and pursue. It, but definitely representing your country as well. Again, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope we get to have another discussion as well That's in the future course. as <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. See you soon. Oh, yeah. thank you so much for having <laughs> thank us. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Ili. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another topic or issue relating the youth. And just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And also I would like to thank Cafe Lagos. And uh, it's definitely a place that everyone should come and visit. And uh, stay safe and have a good night.